grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read, taken from St. Matthew, chapter 2, the story of the coming of the Magi and Epiphany. Everybody loves a good mystery, don't you think? It doesn't matter whether you're talking about an Agatha Christie type whodunit or the mystery of who ate the last Christmas cookie. We sons and daughters love a good mystery. And this story has mystery to go around a plenty. A child was born in Bethlehem with the claim of no human father. Angels appear in the skies announcing the coming of the King of Kings. And then sometime later we have these mysterious visitors from the East. We know very little about them, truth be told. They are called magi, from which we get the words magic and mage. Prophet Daniel had been called a mage, a wise man, years before when he was in captivity. Do these wise men know our Lord's story through the prophecies of Daniel? We don't know what drew them. We only know that they followed the star and landed in Herod's court in Jerusalem. They got close, but not quite close enough. Now before we go on with this story, I want to stop for a moment talk about how people come to Christ, or rather how Christ comes to them. Epiphany is really the season for evangelism, for outreach. As a Christian congregation, we are about bringing people to Christ. But it is very easy for us to try to box people into a certain mold. How people come to Christ is almost as much a mystery as is Christ himself. There is no approved path. There is only the fact that many are lost, and like the Magi of long ago, they may have some of the answers, but not all of them. How do they get from questions and uncertainties and unknowns to the revelation of Jesus Christ? When people walk through these doors, what they know and understand about their own <coughs> spiritual condition varies pretty widely. And truth be told, we all go through spiritual ups and downs, times of obvious faith, <coughs> times of darkness and uncertainty. There may be moments when everything seems clear and obvious, <coughs> But there are other times when all you see is the darkness, when uncertainty seems to hold sway, when there are a lot more questions than there are answers. The people that in darkness sat, period, it may feel that way. So when the star seems to go out, the Magi go to the most obvious place for a king to be born. They go to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city of peace. But they would find no peace there, only a suspicious, jealous old man who wanted no part of this newborn king. When King Herod heard of their coming, he was troubled at all Jerusalem with him. When we hear the story of the newborn king, we can easily think Christmas trees and bright lights, joy and family. But when Herod heard news of this king, there was only darkness, and death was in the air. We heard about it last week. It should not surprise us, then, that when Herod sent them on their way to Bethlehem, his request drips with an almost Disney-esque-like villainy. Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Like so many in our journey to Christ, there are 
bumps on the road, roadblocks in our journey to Him. What seems obvious becomes unclear, and truth may be hiding out in the strangest of places. I think our hymn, which is sang, had a verse about being perplexed. I always like that phrase from the hymn. But the man tried to go to Jerusalem, even with Herod's threatening request in their <coughs> When they arrive to Bethlehem, the star leads them to where the child was. You don't know exactly how old Jesus was at this point. Two years, maybe? Yeah. It certainly is not the same night when he was born. But they go, and they find the child with Mary, his mother, and they fall down and worship. Can you imagine the contrast that they must have seen? They went from the king's court in Jerusalem to a house in a backwater town where shepherds felt at home, not exotic magicians, wise men from the east. This was no place for a king. And yet it was. For as we will see many times in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' reign as king is not like any other king's reign. He rules not with tyranny and fear, but with forgiveness and kindness. And he does not rule from a faraway court, issuing laws and regulations with no purpose to further oppress. No, he is Emmanuel, God with us. He is right here, right now, in this very place. The Magi, upon seeing the child, bow down and worship him. Now, if you were a stranger to the Lutheran liturgy, one of the things that might strike you as odd is that there is a lot of bowing, even kneeling. Like the Magi of old, we confess that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And where he is, there is God's grace his royal robe strewn about us to cover us and our sin. So we bow. We bow to the altar, for here Christ's body and blood are present under the bread and wine. That is truly Emmanuel, God with us, for he is here. Even I, as your pastor, bow to you after the Lord's Supper, because Christ now dwells in you. You are all kings and queens, for you are sons and daughters of the King of Kings. But back to our matter. They bowed down and worshipped him and brought him gifts of gold, of frankincense, and myrrh. Every child gets those, right? <coughs> they are gifts worthy of a king, but they are odd gifts for a child. Gold reminds us of the tabernacle temple of old, the Ark of the Covenant, where God dwelt upon the mercy seat. And frankincense and myrrh were both expensive spices, used of all things, especially for burial. Jesus would later be buried with such spices after he died on the cross. So why is all of this here in the Bible? Why do we remember a day like Epiphany when there is so much mystery that surrounds us? When there are so many questions that we don't know? The Magi's reminder, the Magi's arrival is for us a constant reminder that the Gospel is for everyone, not just a select few. It reminds us that not everyone takes the same path, but in the end, it is the word of God which draws us all to him and to his great salvation. It draws us to the simple, beautiful picture that God hides himself in a lowly child so that everyone, everyone from magi to shepherd to you and me, that we all have a place in this one holy family. You are welcome here, for this is your home with the Christ child. 
come and continue to receive his gifts with saints and angels and magis and shepherds and with the church of all times and all places. This is your home, for he is here for you even now. Amen. God with us. Believe it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith for life everlasting.